Paul Rhodes stirred up the Cyclone Nation last year when he promised his team they'd win a bowl game in his first season as head coach. And the boys from Ames went on to do just that. And on the way to the Insight Bowl, they just happened to gain their first victory at Nebraska in 32 years. Can they carry that emotion into 2010? Well, Cyclone fans, you're about to find out everything you need to know to get ready for the season. Because this is the Iowa State Cyclones Football Preview. Welcome to the Iowa State Football Preview. From the campus in Ames, here's your host, Natalie Taylor. 2009 was a storied year for Iowa State. Head coach Paul Rhodes comes in, meets with his team for the first time in January, and tells them, you're going to win a bowl game. Not only did they win the Insight Bowl, but were also tied for the most improved BCS team in the nation. Now that's the stuff storybooks are made of. So for more on their fairy tale season, here's Dave Armstrong. Thanks, Natalie. It was the kind of turnaround you usually only see on the big screen. The Cyclones went from losing their last 10 games in 2008 to finishing 7-6 and six with a bowl win in 2009. Paul Rhodes might have been the only believer last January, but now all of Cyclone Nation is believing in his program. Iowa State began the season winning three of their first four games, with the only loss coming against cross-state rival Iowa. At the beginning of conference play, they dropped close-fought contests to Kansas State and Kansas before getting their first Big 12 win against Baylor. But it was the next game that changed everything. The Cyclones brought home a 9-7 victory against Nebraska in Lincoln, and they did it without the services of their starting quarterback or star running back. From that moment, you could almost see this team begin to believe in themselves. Listen to me! I am so proud to be your quarterback! The Cyclones would garner only one more conference win against Colorado, but it was enough to make them bowl eligible, and they received an invitation to the Inside Bowl against Minnesota. A 14-13 triumph there would give them a winning record and their first bowl win since 2004. Paul Rhodes is the first Cyclone coach to have a winning record in his inaugural year since 1931 and he's hoping to take that success and the momentum that comes with it into the fall. For that to happen, he's going to rely heavily on eight returning starters on offense and four on defense. Senior quarterback Austin Arnaud will lead the offense again this season. Arnaud threw for over 2,000 yards and 14 touchdowns in 09. And tailback Alexander Robinson will handle most of the running duties. Robinson rushed for nearly 1,200 yards despite missing time with an injury. Those two likely will be the big playmakers on offense this season. We just have to be more consistent. You know, Coach Herman, the offensive coordinator, has the saying that, that we live by, which is go one and all on every play. Uh, so each person has to, to do their job to the best of their ability uh, each and every play for us to be successful. Among the receivers, the biggest returning producer is 6'1 senior wideout Jake Williams. He grabbed 36 catches and five touchdowns last season. And Arnaud will be looking for big target 6'5 tight end Colin Franklin across the middle. We have guys now in place that, you know, the core group of skill guys that I would say are the best that we've had in a long time since I've been here. You know, we always have a, you know, a big name guy who will, you know, catch some touchdowns. We, this year we have just a collective group of guys that are just workers that come every day with their hard hat and, you know, make play. On defense, the Cyclones made huge gains under defensive coordinator Wally Burnham. In the red zone, I-State tied for the second best defensive performance in the nation. And the team they tied, well, that was national champion Alabama. To say that this defense has improved under Rhodes is an understatement. And he is expecting even more from them this season. We've got to limit uh, the points and uh, the yards you know, per game of, of teams that we play. Um, I think we've got to be a great run-stop defense and uh, get pressure on the quarterback. You know, we kind of struggled with that you know, in previous years and last season. And uh, I think we can do that. You know, we'll help our secondary out and you know, we'll win some more games. Most of the experience on defense comes from the secondary. Strong safety David Sims will need to provide leadership to bring this squad together. He was the coach's Big 12 defensive newcomer of the year with five interceptions and 88 total tackles in 2009. Paul Rhodes has been quoted as saying, if we're to upgrade our program, it starts in the Big 12 North. So Natalie, 
I think he's served notice to the other five teams in the division that the Cyclones are open for business in Ames. Thanks, Dave. And you mentioned that monumental win over Nebraska last season. Did you know that that is the first time Iowa State has beat Nebraska at home in Lincoln in 32 years? Well, stay there, Cyclone fans, because we're just getting started. This is your 2010 Iowa State football preview. Coming up next, we'll talk with some of the Cyclone players about this year's squad. And we'll take a look at their competition in the Big 12 North. Welcome back to the Iowa State Football Preview. From the campus in Ames, once again, here's Natalie Taylor. Iowa State made huge strides on both sides of the ball last season, only to add to their storybook year. And it was because of the players, or in this case, characters who made up that team. Now there will be eight returning starters on offense and four on defense to add to this year's squad, but what can we expect to see? What's their plot going to be? What better way to find out than talk to some players ourselves? We're very excited to get going, and you know that showed. We had, you know, continuous improvement is what we always talk about at Iowa State. That's our goal with Coach O, just continuous improvement every game, every second of every game. I felt like we did that last year. We got better. I think every game we played, we got better. And you know, going into this, this year, it's just so much more encouraging knowing, knowing last year that we finished seven and six, seven and six instead of six and seven. Our team battled through a lot to win that game. Uh, a lot of guys were ill, very ill, throwing up the night before. Uh, a lot of people had to be moved from the team so they wouldn't get other players sick. Um, obviously Austin and I missed the game, so it was very big for us. And it was an amazing feeling in the locker room after it. The things we went through that week were unbelievable. We had guys that were sick, dog sick, we were riding in different buses. Um, you know, Alexander didn't play, I didn't play. We had a, two freshmen playing running back and quarterback. You know what, I keep telling everybody Jesus was wearing an Iowa State cap that day. <laughs> All those turnovers, man, we were, we were just so thankful and we were so blessed that day. After that game, you know, the locker room atmosphere was totally different after that. Uh, guys, you know, were more confident, you know, in themselves and uh, kind of gave us a great boost, you know, going in the latter part of the season and, and into the bowl game. So. It just solidified it even more that he wanted to be there. He wanted, you know, he's fighting for us. And we fight, we fought for him every game. And he, he will continue to fight for us as long as he's here at Iowa State. We've been through a lot of adversity, especially us seniors, um, going through three, three coaching staffs. So we're always fighting, always, always giving it everything we have. I think this proved more importantly to ourselves and our fans, you know, we can do it again and the last year wasn't a fluke, you know, that, uh, you know, we can be a contender in Big 12 and, uh, and we are a good football team. We have to prove that last year wasn't just luck, you know, that, that we worked hard for it, uh, we put in the work, so uh, we have a lot to prove. Head coach Paul Rhodes and his staff have already alluded to the fact last year was just the beginning. And this season, they want to do plenty more. But a lot of that has to do with their competition and who they'll be facing in the Big 12 North. So this is the perfect time to check them out. Head coach Dan Hawkins returns for his fifth season in Boulder. The Buffs finished 3-9 and nine with two conference wins last year and are looking to make big gains all the way around. They'll need to settle the quarterback battle in order to add stability to the offense. Rodney Stewart returns to handle the rushing duties. He finished fifth in the conference last season. Dan Hawkins' winning hopes are bolstered this year by having a much more experienced team take the field this fall. <laughs> Coaching legend Bill Snyder returns for his 19th season at K-State. And he's hoping to build on the success of last season and help the Cats return to their first bowl appearance since 2006. The big threat coming back on offense is running back Daniel Thomas. Thomas logged the fourth highest rushing total in school history last year. His average of 105.4 yards per game came in 21st in the nation while leading the Big 12 in rushing. Turner Gill takes over the head coaching duties at Kansas this year. He grabs the reins of a team that lost their last seven games in 09. Gill will need to use the turnaround skills he developed at Buffalo for the Jayhawks to be a contender this season. The O-line is experienced and solid. That should help as Gill looks to get production from a new quarterback and running back. Last year, Kansas ranked near the bottom of the league in scoring offense. They will need to show improvement this year for the Jayhawks to better that 5-7 record from 9 Gary Pinkle and the Tigers enter the 2010 season as a much more experienced team. 17 veterans come back from last year's squad. Junior quarterback Blaine Gabbert returns to call the signals for the Tigers. 
Last year, the gritty Gabbert played much of the season with an ailing ankle. Even with that disadvantage, he still put up some impressive numbers, ending up second in the Big 12 in passing efficiency. He'll need to continue that kind of passing prowess for the Tigers to make a run at the North Crown. The Cornhuskers bring back 19 starters this season, and you can add 59 returning lettermen to that impressive list. After their strong finish last season, that's enough to make any opposing coach more than a little nervous. Quarterback Zach Lee will be joined in the backfield by senior I-back Roy Hallou Jr. Hallou finished the season fourth in the Big 12 with over 1,100 rushing yards. This will be a seasoned offense that could put up big numbers every time they take the field. Coming up next, we'll hear from second-year head coach Paul Rhodes. And later, our experts give us their insight on Cyclone football.